From our Washington DC studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hannah Zuberi. Our top story tonight, China has criticized the US for vetoing a UN Security Council resolution aimed at securing an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. It is the third time the U.S. has blocked such a resolution. China's UN representative, Zhang Jun, has expressed strong disappointment, saying that the veto worsens the crisis in Gaza by effectively condoning further violence. Zhang says that the U.S. stance contradicts efforts to halt the bloodshed, likening it to endorsing ongoing atrocities. China's rebuke underscores growing international frustration over the lack of decisive action to address the escalating humanitarian crisis in the region. Israeli forces targeted the UN food convoy in central Gaza on February the 5th, obstructing vital aid delivery to the famine-threatened northern region. According to UN documents accessed by CNN, despite prior coordination between the UN and Israeli authorities on the convoy's route, an Israeli military holding point attacked one of the convoy's 10 trucks. It was loaded with wheat flour, crucial for bread production. Despite UN refugee agency UNRWA's coordination with Israeli authorities on convoy routes, the strike has prompted a halt in aid deliveries to northern Gaza. The last time the agency was able to deliver food north of Wadi Gaza was on January 23rd, which inhabits 300,000 people. UNRWA's director Tom White said that the convoy had been hit by Israeli naval gunfire and shared two photographs on X. They showed a flatbed truck with a hole where its cargo had been and boxes of supplies scattered on the route. UNRWA's head legal advisor for Gaza, Philippa Greer, said she was on the convoy when it was hit and the team was, quote, extremely lucky no one was injured. The convoy still requested permission to proceed through an Israeli checkpoint that supervises entry into northern Gaza, but was denied entry. Israeli tanks fired on Palestinians gathering for aid distribution in northern Gaza. The incident highlights the dire consequences of the Israeli blockade. With starvation looming, citizens are risking bullets to access minimal supplies. The situation underscores the desperation in Gaza, where 85% of people are internally displaced and essential resources are scarce due to Israel's war on the region. Israeli airstrikes have killed 118 Palestinians and injured 163 people in Gaza over the past 24 hours, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. The death toll in the ongoing crisis spanning 137 days has surpassed 29,313, with 70% of the victims being children and women. Witnesses report heavy fire in various areas of Gaza, with displaced Palestinians seeking shelter near the Egyptian border. In Al Mawasi district, northwest of the city of Khan Yunis, displaced Palestinians are fearful as Israeli ground forces raid residential areas. This has prompted panic and uncertainty amongst residents. The Israeli army had previously designated the area as safe. In Gaza City, children are protesting, demanding food and water, holding empty pots. The World Health Organization is evacuating patients due to the destruction of medical facilities. Meanwhile, an Israeli airstrike in Lebanon killed a woman and a five-year-old girl. The International Court of Justice, or ICJ, is now in session, with 52 nations and three international bodies presenting arguments on Israel and Palestine. On the third day of the session this week, the UAE, Russia, Cuba, Egypt, Gambia, Hungary, and the United States 
amongst others, presented arguments. U.S. Representative Richard Visek told the court Israel is not legally obligated to immediately and unconditionally withdraw from occupied territory. He said allegations that Israel is transferring settlers to the occupied Palestinian territories, for example, should be addressed by the United Nations Security Council. Egypt's Jasmine Musa said Palestine has been subjected to the longest protracted occupation in modern history. She denounced what she said was the ongoing obstruction of the Palestinian people's inalienable, permanent, and unqualified right to self-determination. Colombia's envoy Andre Jimenez Herrera described Gaza's dire situation resulting from Israeli policies as, quote, horror and devastation. Bringing more news stories after the break. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome back. Thousands of Indian workers seeking employment in Israel are lining up outside employment centers. They have been lured by higher wages amid shortages caused by barring Palestinian laborers to work in Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi expedited an agreement allowing 42,000 Indian laborers to work in Israel. Labor unions opposed the deal, fearing exploitation and Israel's poor construction safety record. Opposition voices also condemned the Indian government for profiting amid the Gaza war. Workers remain undeterred, willing to bear expenses and risk lives for better wages. Since Israel's war on Palestine broke out October 7, about 100,000 Palestinian construction workers have been barred from entering Israel, creating a huge labor shortfall. Israel's now looking to fill that gap with migrant workers from India, China, and elsewhere. Unemployment in India was at more than 8% last year, up nearly 3% points since before COVID-19, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Amarjeet Kaur, General Secretary of the All India Trade Union Congress, told the Press Trust of India that they intend to take up the matter to court for pushing workers to war zones. The Museum of Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina's capital, Sarajevo, is offering visitors the opportunity to send messages of solidarity to the people of Gaza. The institution contains the personal belongings of people subjected to various forms of torture and genocide at concentration camps in various cities of the country during the 1992-1995 to Bosnian War. Officials at the museum, which is one of the key tourist attractions in the country, believe Gazans are being subjected to crimes similar to those committed against Bosnian Muslims. The museum has opened a message room allowing visitors to write passages of support to Palestinians in Gaza. Belma Zulik the museum's curator told Anadalu News Agency that humanity has learned very little from the past. She says that the museum inspires people to work towards ending genocide. The Council on American Islamic Relations has pointed out the detrimental effects of the FBI's terror watch list on the Muslim community in the U.S. Deputy Executive Director Edward Ahmed Mitchell says this heightened security is affecting job applications, banking, and even travel. He says that the issue garnered renewed attention in January 2023 when a Swiss hacker exposed the watch list online, revealing cases of mistaken identities. These included those of children which have witnessed racial profiling and discrimination. 
Originating post-September 11, activists say that the watch list unfairly targets Muslims without legal charges, leading to intrusive questioning and even endangering lives. Despite a slight decrease, CARE received thousands of discrimination complaints last year. CARE is pursuing legal action to protect Muslim civil rights, including ongoing litigation in the Supreme Court. Mitchell warns against the government's attempts to evade accountability by removing people from the list prematurely. Six Somali-American families in Minnesota have won the right to opt their children out of the LGBTQ curriculum, protecting their First Amendment rights. Initially denied by St. Louis Park Public School District, legal intervention prompted the district to comply. The families objected to the elementary level materials promoting LGBTQ identities, which conflict with their religious beliefs. Despite state law supporting parental involvement and opt-outs, the district initially imposed restrictive procedures. Following legal pressure, the families obtained full rights. Legal experts are hailing the victory as significant, emphasizing the importance of respecting diverse beliefs. Some lawmakers and other groups have voiced opposition to the opt-outs. Similar battles are being fought nationwide with parents demanding control over their children's education, irrespective of religious affiliation. In Maryland, parents from a variety of faiths, including Islam, Roman Catholicism, and Orthodox Christianity are fighting for similar rights for their elementary age children. Analysts say these cases underscore broader debates on parental rights and LGBTQ inclusion in schools. Turkish security forces have detained six suspects for allegedly passing information to Chinese intelligence about ethnic Uyghurs and groups in Turkey. Judicial sources say that the operation in Istanbul was part of a terrorism and organized crime investigation. It has found that seven suspects had collected information on people and organizations hailing from the occupied East Turkestan, the Uyghur homeland. Arrest warrants were issued for the suspects who were found by Turkey's National Intelligence Organization to have shared the information they collected with Chinese intelligence. While Istanbul police have detained six suspects, the search continues for the one remaining suspect. Chechen prosecutors are urging a three-and-a-half-year prison sentence for 20-year-old Nikita Yurovel. He is charged with burning a copy of the Quran in the Russian city of Volgograd. Yurovel is being tried in Chechnya, North Caucasus region. The verdict is due on February 27th at the capital Grozny's Visaltovsky District Court. Yurovel has admitted to offending Muslims but denied intent to disrupt public order. In August, he accused 15-year-old Adam Kadyrov, son of Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov, of assaulting him in custody. Kadyrov shared a video of the incident praising his son. No investigation has been initiated and the criminal has refrained from commenting. In a landmark ruling, the European Court of Human Rights, or ECHR, has found Switzerland guilty of three human rights violations. The case involved Mohamed Shiwa Bale, a Swiss national subjected to an identity check at Zurich station sparking allegations of racial profiling. The ECHR criticized Swiss courts for failing to adequately address the issue, citing a violation of Article 8 and Article 14 of the European Convention on Human Rights. The provision relates to the prohibition of discrimination and the right to respect for private life. Wabel was fined for refusing to comply with police instructions, but the court contested the legality of the check and the subsequent fine. Amnesty International Switzerland called for reforms to address systematic ethnic profiling, emphasizing broader European concerns. That's all from our Washington DC studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. 
For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Assalamu alaikum and good night.